Hi guys, this is a quick day 44 update. I have not done an update since I think day five. I've done a lot of random videos, but not just a full on sort of overall status of the tank. <clears throat> so it's been, you know, it's day 44, it's been over a month. <clears throat> I had a lot of trouble with uh, diatoms initially. And you can still see that there are spots throughout the tank where the diatoms really kind of took over for a while. Um, but they have died off and I've, I've managed to keep them cleaned up pretty well. Uh, but you can see that I have done a lot with the rock work. I, I'm adding additional uh, rock pieces to the tank <clears throat> sort of slowly over time. Uh, a couple of rocks you know, per week typically. Although I've kind of slowed down now because the, really the fish have gotten, as you can see, they've really settled in. I mean, it's uh, different fish have different places they like to stay. For instance, the bigger kai here. This guy, <clears throat> he tends to stay on this side of the tank, which is the west side. So I think of <clears throat> think of the tank in terms of the west, this side. This is the corner, and this is the east side. So the the bigger kai tends to stay on the west side. Um, most of the uh, most of the Demosonae tend to stay over here, as well as the, the juvenile uh, powder blue Sokolofi. You can see all of them down there, tons of them. And this fish, the Metroclemia aurora, um, stays in that spot pretty much all the time. And then as we swing around, this fish, this is the wild caught, uh, wild caught ice blue. He pretty much stays on on the east side, right in that area, right there. So you can see that the Akai will roam. In fact, all of them will roam. The the the, um, the ice blue here, he'll roam around the other side. You know, they but they have areas where they tend to stay. So you can see the the bigger Rotis back in the back. He is uh he pretty much lives in the corner right above where the undercam is, down, down the bottom. He hangs out in that area. Um, you know, and then for the most part, <clears throat> the, the smaller juveniles, the uh, little guys over here, tend to stay around these rocks. It's, it's been interesting to me so far to see <clears throat> how much the fish do tend to prefer one little area. So they'll pick, you know, they'll have like a little, a, little uh, a sphere of about 30 inches or so that they stay inside of pretty much all the time. Now they'll certainly roam, you know, for breeding or to fight or if there's food to be had, but they do tend to stay in the same spot all the time. <clears throat> so you can see I have, um, everything is really well set up. Uh, the continuous drip system is running. You can see that. It's more like a continuous stream. Uh, there are, there are 96,000 drops in one uh, gallon of water. That right there is about, um, about four drops a second, which ends up being a little tiny stream. And so I'm doing a, a fair amount of water turnover. Um, you know, the water basically sits at this level all the time. So I have a little piece of tape there, I can just walk by the tank. You know, kind of when I, when I come into the room, I can just glance over at this piece of green tape. And as long as the water's sitting right on top of that green tape, then I know that the sump is working, that the overflow is working, that everything is the way it's supposed to be. It has not moved from that point in the tank in about two weeks. It's been right there. Now, so the water comes in here, and ultimately, I think since the last update, I've also installed the sump here. Uh, so the sump now has, um, let's see, turn the lights a little bit. The sump is processing water at a rate of about, about 1,500 gallons per hour through the tank. I did another video that talks about how the sump works in detail. I'll link that, you know, here in this video somewhere. Essentially, um, the water drains out of the main tank through this one inch overflow here, as well as this very loud <laughs> one and a half inch overflow in the back corner. So I'm gonna have to redo that one. It's too loud and uh, it's not ideal. It needs to be uh, worked on. So anyway, that's, those two overflows process downward into the tank, into the sump, and then gets processed through the sump and then pump back, pump back up to the manifold. 
I break out the, the returns and the manifold into three different returns here. You can see there's a three quarter inch blue pex. The pex, the three quarter inch blue pex, uh, delivers the return water to all three of these locations. So it comes in here, it returns to some water right there, and then finally right here. So the, the, sump, the sump water is actually being returned to um, yeah, three different areas of the tank. I also still have the have two Fluval 406s. Since there's no, I'm not pulling water um, from a return over here into the sump. I'm using the two Fluvals here as the uh, primary filtration mechanism for this entire sort of side of the tank. So that 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 comes out to well over 2,000 gallons per hour, which is pretty good. I mean, you know, the tank's 200 gallons, that's 10, 10x per hour. That's, that's good, that's really good. And you can tell the water is absolutely crystal clear. I mean, it looks great. Let's see if I can get a... You know, it actually looks better on the stream than it does through my iPhone. I don't know, this, this shot right here's pretty good. Let's just leave it here for a second. Yeah, that looks really neat. It really, I really like the way this corner tank works because you get these long shots. So that's six feet. It's six feet from where my camera is to the uh, foam, the 3D foam down there on the on the end. And it makes for a really, it makes for a really neat view. You can come around and do the same thing on the other side. You can see I I, I designed the 3D background stuff to have that canyon down through the middle there see where the lights coming up it's like a little canyon sort of hiding spot if the fish feel threatened they can just duck down into that little crevice and you'll see them do it a lot and it just gives them one more place that they can retreat the more places you can give these fish to hide the less stressed out they'll be they like that if they feel threatened they want to be able to get away and I've given them ample locations to escape throughout the tank. I really like this. Look at the, he's changing colors like right. You can, you can tell he'll, he'll turn a light, super light colored um, sort of powder blue color when he's either angry or when he's spawning or trying to show off. And then he settles into more of a, <clears throat> more of a purple color when he's relaxed. That fish is actually wild caught. That's it, right from uh, Malawi. There are two females, um, <clears throat> two females of his species, in here as well, and one of them is holding. So there's the one that's not holding. She's obviously pregnant, and the one that is holding. Uh, that is the one that is holding. Oh, right here. See her mouth? Look at her, see her bottom? That's the female ice blue, and she has got a mouthful of babies, or eggs, or whatever. So I like that, that's pretty cool. Hopefully they're not hybrid. I suspect that, you know, he's pretty dominant. I imagine that when she spawned, he was there. And so I should have, I should have, um, you know, generation one wild caught babies here in the next couple of uh, weeks. So anyway, it's coming really nicely. Come on, very nice. <clears throat> From an environmental standpoint, um, the, <clears throat> the continuous drip system here is, has kept nitrates almost unmeasurable. They're like 10, five, you know. Ammonia is essentially zero. pH is steady at eight. Temperature is steady at 78. GH about 13. KH about, about 10 to 13. The KH drops and the hardness drops as a result of the continuous drip. So I'm always having to add um, buffer and uh, trace and, and lake salt. Very, you know, all about every four days I have to replenish. I add about a tablespoon of buffer and a tablespoon of salt every three or four days. And that's, that just shows you how much uh, the continuous drip system is, is actually 
pushing through the tank. I might have it set too high. I might, I might back it down a little bit. So yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm pretty happy. I've had a lot. <laughs> I will say this. Um, you know, it's an all glass tank, right? And I like that, but it is very difficult to keep this from happening. Um, that's that's uh, <laughs> it is uh, built up from the hardness from the salt, and it it is hard to remove. You actually have to take a razor blade, believe it or not, and just and scrape it off. And I just I don't do it much on the end pieces because it's disruptive. I tend to keep the middle ones a little more clean. But keeping those uh, keeping those glass braces clean has been a challenge. Also, the other problem is that the fish they knock water out of the tank constantly. I mean, there's the thing you can really see if she's holding. She won't eat too. She wants to. She'll go up to food and look at it, but then she won't take it. She looks good though. She looks. She's healthy. <clears throat> um, listen. Uh, oh yeah, the fish, they, they knock water out of the tank constantly, like all the time. The, the floor down here is constantly wet. Um, makes me nervous. I, I'm going to end up putting another uh, strut along the front here, like the back one. It'll, it'll help with, it'll reinforce further the front pieces, but it'll also provide, um, it'll provide a little lip that'll keep some of that splash from falling over the front of the tank. I kind of backed up, you can, you can see just, <laughs> it completely occupies this entire room. This entire room is dedicated to just this tank. But, as I've said in other videos, this has turned out so much better than I thought it would. <laughs> it really, it's way better than I expected it to be, and that's, that's a good thing. Okay, comments or questions, guys? Uh, you know, pop on the stream, talk to me live, or else uh, leave your comments or questions in the uh, comments below. Bye, guys.